Alice Stewart Show is on the air and on your radio right now. Here's more from Alice on 96.5 The Voice. Welcome back to the Alice Stewart Show, 733 here in Central Arkansas. Joined on the phone this morning with our Congressman Tom Cotton, who is busy working in Washington, D.C. He is also running against our Senator Mark Pryor for the U.S. Senate seat. Congressman, great to have you here. Good morning. Great to be on with you, Alice, as always. And I understand you guys are facing some bad weather up there yourself, which is causing some work delays for some folks. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, there's heavy snow right now in Washington, D.C., uh, but uh, I'll uh, be going forward as planned, I believe, with hearings today on the Iran nuclear deal um, in my Foreign Affairs Committee uh, with Senator John Kerry, uh, unless the roads get totally impassable. Uh, is- but yes, there is a... Pretty pretty heavy storm in Washington right now. It's been a mess for a lot of folks, and there's also been a mess for uh, those who are pushing uh, Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act. And, you know, the the latest news is we're hearing more and more folks frustrated with the sticker shock. We're hearing uh, dropped policies. We're hearing higher taxes. We're seeing so many, so much fallout aside from healthcare.gov, the website that doesn't work. Let me, let me just ask you this. When we're hearing the president promise in getting this pass and running for re-election, if you like your doctor, you can keep it. If you like your insurance, you can keep it. Promises, period, that that can happen. Uh, He promised that, as well as Democrats, Senator Mark Pryor. In your view, were they being dishonest, or did they simply not know this whole time? Alice, let me go back to what you said at the very outset about what a bad time it's been for those people who are promoting Obamacare. That's certainly true, but I'm a lot more worried about the people who are suffering from Obamacare, my constituents all across Arkansas, who are losing their insurance plan, who are losing their doctor, who are facing those kind of sticker shocks. As to whether uh, the supporters knew or didn't know at the time, uh, I think it's hard to say. Um, I think some of them, like the president, uh, clearly knew, if you look at his words at the time, that he was pushing one line, most on most occasions that if you like your health insurance you can keep it but he occasionally acknowledged that there were some plans that would be lost uh and that was the design of obamacare it's not a flaw of it it's the design of it but if you look at what senator Pryor said uh last week for instance that he learned uh last month with all the rest of us that uh a lot of people wouldn't be able to keep their health insurance plan uh, i'm not sure what's worse whether you know one knew that this would happen and still supported obamacare or that one couldn't understand Obamacare, couldn't understand the clear design of it, and voted for it anyway. Um, so the, I think it's a mixture of people who either knew or, or didn't know, but that doesn't really change the fact that uh, tens of thousands of Arkansans and millions of Americans uh, are losing their health insurance as a direct result of this law. And that fact being such a key component of the promise uh, for getting support for Obamacare and knowing that that was a, an empty promise. Now we have Ezekiel Emanuel, who is one of the architects of Obamacare this week, said, well, sure, you can keep your doctor if you pay more. And, and I think what you make an inst- interesting point in that uh, if Senator Pryor knew that and voted for it anyway, that's a concern. But if he didn't know it, uh, that's a concern as well. Well, I mean, he said last week that uh, he learned with the rest of us that some health insurance plans uh, wouldn't be grandfathered under Obamacare. Um, Well, Alice, it's not just Obamacare itself that he cast the decisive vote on that caused those plans to be lost. The Senate in September 2010 voted on the very regulation that is causing Arkansans to lose their health insurance. The administration, when it published that regulation, published an analysis of the regulation predicting that over half of most employers would end up dropping their health insurance, in addition to the consequences it would have for people who got their insurance not through an employer but on the individual market. And Mark Pryor voted yet yeah, voted to keep that regulation as well. And so it, it's, right, it's it, astonishing that he didn't understand the very plain and direct consequences of the laws for which he was voting. Right, and that goes back to Nancy Pelosi's, you got to pass the bill before we can find out what's in it. And unfortunately, the American people are paying the consequences for that. And I want to ask you, you mentioned your constituents. What are they telling you? What are you hearing as you come back in your district uh, here in Arkansas? What are they telling you uh, about their concerns and their experiences with Obamacare? Well, I do hear from people who have received cancellation notices. Those might not take effect in Arkansas until 2014, but that just means that they've had a stay of execution, not that they've had an acquittal, so to speak, from Obamacare. 
Uh, I also hear from people who are facing sticker shocks. That's in the individual market, people who are self-employed or have a small business, like my dentist uh, and his wife who go to church with me in Dardanelle. Uh, they're going to lose their insurance, and they're going to pay almost twice as much uh, as they were paying. Um, I'm also hearing from employers who are very distressed that for the first time they're going to have to ask their employees to start contributing something to their health insurance, whereas in the past these employers have generously paid for all of their employees and their spouses and their children's health insurance. I hear from seniors who are very worried uh, about their ability to maintain access to the doctors of their choice uh, as uh, as Medicare pays $700 billion of cuts from Obamacare and faces rationing from an unelected panel of bureaucrats in Washington, making Medicare patients um, less attractive for uh, doctors to see. Uh, those are the concerns I hear pretty much every stop I make all across my district. And Republicans and conservatives have called for a repeal or replace of Obamacare for years. With all the problems we have now, where, where do you stand on that? What should happen with Obamacare? Uh, well, Alice, I'm still very firmly in favor of repeal. Um, I have thought we should repeal this abominable law from the day it passed. I voted for repeal, and I'll continue to advocate for it. Of course, it's going to be hard to repeal the law called Obamacare when the man living in the White House was named Barack Obama. That doesn't necessarily mean it will be impossible, because just a month ago, for instance, the president was calling the cancel plans substandard. He was saying they were unregulated. He was saying it was like the Wild West. And then when the political pressure got too hot for him, uh, he backpedaled and he said, you can keep your substandard unregulated Wild West plan. So it's hard to say uh, just how far the president will go when he faces political pressure. But in the meantime, I think we have a duty to try to protect our constituents from the worst harms of this law. So, for instance, last month the House passed legislation in a bipartisan fashion with almost 40 Democrats that would allow insurers to continue offering plans that don't meet all of the mindless Obamacare dictates. Uh, the Senate needs to pass that legislation, and the president needs to sign it. He adopted a so-called administrative fix, I worry one, that won't stand up in the courts because he doesn't have authority to do so. And two, it only lasts for a year, and it doesn't uh, make those plans attractive for insurers to keep offering them, so people will still continue to lose their health insurance. So in the end, the administrative fix is nothing more than a PR gambit. But we can pass those kind of laws that will stop the worst harms of Obamacare from taking effect as they are right now. Right. And one last question on Obamacare, and then I want to ask you quickly about the budget. In uh, Ezekiel Emanuel, Dr. Emanuel was on Sunday shows, and he is one of the architects of Obamacare, and he says that what the administration plans to do now is a big PR push to help promote Obamacare. We need to just we need to make sure people really understand how great. Uh, this is. Do you think that will make any difference to what people are suffering with Obamacare, a big PR campaign? Yeah, I, I, I saw that the president said he was going to go on a 23-day PR blitz, and I invited him to come to Arkansas so he can see the consequences that Obamacare is having on our campaigns. So far, I haven't heard back from the White House Travel <laughs> Office of him picking it taking me up on my offer, but oh. it still stands. Don't hold uh, breath. No, I don't, think, I don't think a so-called PR push is going to turn around the fortunes of Obamacare. Anytime a politician tells you that he has a communications problem, he really has a reality problem, and that's what Barack Obama and Mark Pryor and Obamacare have is a reality problem. Oh. They can fix a website, they can't fix a law, and this law is not fixable. Absolutely. And uh, I want to ask you another big issue this week is budget and the, the budget uh, deal that is uh, there's one currently being uh, worked on hammered out between Democratic Senator Patty Murray and Republican Representative Paul Ryan. They've been meeting behind closed doors. I know the details of that are very uh, close to the vest and the weather has slowed things down a bit, but that uh, should come out either today or tomorrow. What do you expect to see in some type of budget deal in order to uh, to come to an agreement? Well, Paul Ryan is among the elected leaders uh, whom I most admire. I'll, of course, evaluate uh, any uh, deal on its own merits once it's produced. Uh, I do expect any agreement to be modest in size. Um, Paul and Senator Patty Murray, his counterpart in the Senate, limited uh, the scope of the deal to exclude any changes uh, to major programs like Medicare or Medicaid or Social Security, as well as to exclude any significant tax increases. Um, so any deal would probably be somewhat minor, um, but beyond that, it's really hard to evaluate uh, in advance because the details are still very much uh, up for debate within the budget conference between the two chambers.
And one of the issues, you, you mentioned a couple items that they are trying to keep out of this, but one specific that is being discussed quite a bit is the uh, extending the unemployment benefits. Where do you stand on that? Well, let's support the traditional uh, program of unemployment benefits of 26 weeks that help people when they lose their job to get back on their feet. Um, extended unemployment benefits is not a long-term solution, though. The solution is to get our economy growing again, and the way we can do that is to repeal Obamacare, to simplify our tax code, to stop imposing burdens and regulations on businesses, and to address our $17 trillion debt. We shouldn't be excited or celebrating an extension of unemployment benefits. We should be excited when we get people off of unemployment or off of welfare or off of food stamps and get them into a job that pays well and has good benefits and gives them the dignity and the pride of work and supporting themselves and their families. And one last deal. that Oftentimes when you have these major discussions and major deals that need to be worked out, oftentimes they get to the last minute and there is a, everyone's backs against the wall. How How likely do you see some budget deal agreed before we see a, a possible uh, another government shutdown in January? Well, I, I'm hopeful that we'll have an agreement uh, that will allow us to start setting priorities again uh, through Congressional Appropriations Bill on a case-by-case basis for each agency. Uh, that may happen this week uh, before the House uh, closes up uh, session on Friday. Uh, it may not happen until we return in January, uh, right after the new year. Uh, the next deadline is not until January 15th. Obviously, the work is going on even when the Congress is not in session uh, between our budget uh, chairman like Paul Ryan and Patty Murray. So I'm hopeful that we don't see the kind of last minute uh, deal that all too often happens in Congress. All right. Well, we will see. We'll keep a close eye on it. Congressman Tom Cotton uh, running for U.S. Senate against Senator Mark Pryor. Congressman, thank you. Thank you very much, Alice. Y'all have a great day. Same to you. Appreciate you. We will take a quick break, and when we come back, we will have more on this budget battle in Washington, D.C. We'll be back with more after this on The Alice Stewart Show. The Alice Stewart Show on 96.5 The Voice.